today guys I found a guinea nest I've been keeping my eyes peeled for this nest uh, for a while now because I've been keeping tabs on my guinea pears and there was a pair that kept hanging out around the barn that I would see pretty often and then here lately for about the past 10 days to two weeks um, I've only seen the male guinea hanging out and so I figured that meant that the female was sitting on a nest somewhere and then today I just stumbled across the nest they like to hide them and so they're often very difficult to find and I usually find them by accident um, more than when I'm actually looking for them. So um, when I found it earlier today, the mama was actually sitting on the nest and I've been kind of debating um, what I want to do with these guinea eggs. Um, the moms often are not very successful at hatching the eggs by themselves um, because uh, well, first of all, they have them out in places like this brush pile, which are vulnerable to predators. Um, and oftentimes, even if they do manage to hatch them, um, they will lead their guinea keats through the, through the wet, dewy grass early in the morning. And they will just like chill um, in the grass or, or get kind of smothered and tangled up in the grass stems. So we have not um, had much success with... Uh, guinea hens being able to actually raise keats themselves even when they have been able to hatch a clutch of eggs. So this year I've been experimenting with um, putting guinea uh, eggs under a broody hen to hatch. Um, so and that has gone pretty well so far. Um, I hatched out one clutch of eggs. I have about 24 guinea keats right now that were hatched out by my hens. Um, and if I can hatch out these guys, um, I will actually have some to sell as well. So that will be nice. That will kind of help pay the expenses for my feed and whatnot. Um, the other thing we've done in the past is watch really closely and try to catch, uh, the guinea keats, um, when their mom takes them off of the nest, um, before, um, before they have a chance to to get wet or or have something bad happen to them, um, and we have we have caught uh, quite a few over the years that way, um, but it is kind of a uh, circus to try to get out there and and catch all these keats. They're very small and they move very quickly and they camouflage really well, so it's kind of difficult to get them. So since the mama is off the nest, um, I think I'm going to go ahead and pull the eggs and go stick them underneath a broody hen and see what happens. So it looks like we got a total of 21 eggs. Obviously I don't know yet how many of these are actually going to be viable and will hatch. Just to give you an idea, this is where the guinea had her nest. So if I hadn't been in this uh, junk slash brush pile digging around for spare pieces of cattle panel today, I don't know that I would have ever figured out where she was nesting. So I've got a couple of hens right now that are trying to go broody. One is actually a uh, McMurray Red Star, so it's a production bird, and um, they're not even supposed to go broody. But she is definitely trying, and then I've got a Buff Orpington as well. Neither of them have been tested broodies, so um, this year I've used my black Australorps and my speckled Sussex as broody hens. And they have done, the speckled Sussex has been okay. The Australorps are amazing. They're phenomenal broodies. Right now my buff Orpington is not even on the nest at all. 
She's been kind of on again, off again, trying to go broody here lately. Um, so I think I'm going to try sticking these underneath this red hen and see what happens. She's been very persistent. So we'll see if she can stick with it or not. If she can't, I probably will be able to get one of my Australorps to sit on these eggs because they are just very dedicated broodies. I am very new to chicken brooding this year, um, but so far I've had pretty good luck with um, sticking the eggs under a broody hen while she's in a nest box because they usually pick a nest box that they like to use. Um, and then once they've sat on those eggs for a couple of days, number one, that gives you the opportunity to know whether or not they're going to actually stick with it. Um, and also, um, it kind of gives her the idea of setting and brooding and gets her kind of in that groove. And then I will move my broodies, um, into a separate place so they're isolated from the other chickens. They can't get picked on. The chicks won't get picked on. Um, and it's just a little bit safer. So, I'm going to give this gal some more eggs. I don't know if she'll be able to sit on all 21. Sometimes it seems like they have a hard time sitting on that many. But I'll just see how many I can get her to take. Maybe I'll be able to get somebody else to take the rest. Who knows? So, we'll see how it goes. So, she's taken about half of those eggs. I'm just giving her some space. And then... I'll see, maybe another hen will want to sit on these other eggs, or maybe I can get them under her. But I don't really need to rush because it's warm and they're not really going to get chilled or anything sitting there. So I think they'll be fine for now. So fun fact, guinea keats can fit through chicken wire. They're very tiny. They're about half the size of regular sized chicks and uh they can they can get through that speckled hen is crowing again i don't know what her deal is anyways they can get through chicken wire so um we have this grow out cage that we made for shush speck um that we made for our chicks that are too big to go in the brooder and are not yet ready to be integrated in with the main flock of chickens. And when I started messing around with broodies, um, I put them up here because it was a good spot for them to be broody and for the chicks to get going. Um, worked okay for the regular chicks, guinea keats, I can get out. So I did the hillbilly fix with Walmart boxes and um, that has actually worked quite well. Um, I would eventually love to have um, a different type of wire uh, like a hardware cloth cage. That's not going to happen this time around. So I'm just using cardboard and I'm actually going to probably use cardboard to divide off a section of this pen because I have my guinea keats that are like about, I think they're three weeks, two or three weeks old now. Um, they're still using this pen at night, so um, I don't really want them in there with the broody hen and newly hatched guinea keats. I feel like that's just going to cause problems. So I'm going to section off a part uh, for the broody to go into eventually. And make sure that I line the walls with cardboard so that the guinea keats won't be able to escape. 
once they start hatching. My broodies have so far all been extremely tolerant. My Australorps, they're amazing moms, they're amazing broodies, they're very gentle. I can do pretty much anything with them. They don't peck me, they don't bother me. They're very nice. Um, but I would prefer to not be slamming and banging around uh, with my broody hen in there. So I'm going to try to get that all done today or I might have to finish up tomorrow so that uh, I can move my hen in to the cage and I won't have to be disturbing her um, while she's trying to brood her eggs. So I've had supper. I got myself some mint tea, which my chickens were checking out. And I'm going to see what's happening. Oh, look at here. Buff is back on the nest. All right. Awesome. Good girls. So I guess at this point, I'll just give it a couple days and see what happens. Um, when you're brooding, when you have uh, broody hens in the nest boxes like this, um, sometimes if they're lower on the pecking order, they will get chased out of the box. Um, so that's something you have to watch out for. And also other hens will either chase them out or get in there with them and lay their eggs in there. So you'll end up with random other eggs mixed in with the ones you're trying to hatch. So that's why I like to keep them separated. Um, but I think if I move them now, they're going to just get upset. And honestly, I'm not really sure if they're both going to stick with it. So I'm going to give them a couple days. Just keep an eye on them. Luckily, the weather's warm. So if they get off the nest, the eggs are probably going to be okay for several hours. Um, so we're going to see what happens. The speckled hen thinks she's a rooster. I don't know. She's got some sort of a, I think it's a hormone imbalance. Um, so the first time, she was my first broody uh, that I uh, had this year. And she did this after she got done being broody. Um, she did this whole thing where she started crowing. It was weird. And then she cleared up, went back to normal, and then when she went broody again, uh, this to hatch these, help hatch out these 24 guinea keeps that I've got right now. Now she's starting to crow again, so I don't know. Hopefully she'll clear up again. I'm not sure what her deal is. It must be a hormonal thing or, I don't know, something internal going on. I have no idea. But hopefully she'll get over it. So here's my little broody area that I put together. Very, very high tech fancy walmart boxes cardboard yay um but it should work hopefully um it will keep my two so i've got this side set up for my breeze and then this side set up for my adolescent guineas and they're two australorp mamas that are raising them for me the other guineas are big enough now that they can't fit through the chicken wire, so um, I took down most of the cardboard that I had up around the edges just so I, they would have some better airflow. And uh, also because um, cardboard gets kind of gross, this is a chicken house, it's dirty, um, cardboard kind of gets nasty, so I just didn't want it hanging out there. So eventually... Maybe I'll be able to put some hardware cloth on and uh, have a broody coop that will be completely solid. We haven't had any issues for a couple years, but in the past we've had issues with um, snakes getting in here and getting... I think they killed guinea keats um, one year that we had put in here because um, they can also fit through the chicken wire. So honestly, my recommendation would be uh, if you're going to build a grow out cage or anywhere where you're going to be having small chicks or young chicks or guinea keeps or anything, maybe consider using hardware cloth. I think it's a bit more expensive than chicken wire, um, 
but nothing's gonna get through those holes. <laughs> uh, your gain keys won't escape and uh, the snakes won't be able to get through either. This is my very dirty chicken house. It's disorganized. I got all this chick starting stuff sitting up here because I don't really know where to go with it. I keep having all these broodies. So about the time I'm like, oh, I should put all that away, <laughs> I get another another broody or another set of eggs I'm trying to hatch. So I'm just like, oh, I'll just leave it out a little longer. So we shall see. I'm having a great time though. I'll tell you what. I've been learning all this stuff about broody hens and it's pretty fascinating. Are you going to be a good mama? Are you going to be a good mama? Hatch out some cute stripy guineas? Yeah? I realized I never recorded an outro for the video, so here it is. Thank you for watching. Um, I'm going to keep you all posted on the progress, hopeful progress, of my second batch of guinea keats that I'm trying to hatch. So fingers crossed that those hens stay on their nests and I get some cute guinea keats here in about four weeks.